Welcome back to the Jones Zone, guys. Uh, there's been some talk online about the Bible being pro-abortion, with some people pointing to scriptures in the book of Numbers, specifically chapter 5, verses 11 through 31. But uh, before I begin, first let me just say that a lot of people, they just like to throw around scriptures without context. And at some point, many of us are guilty of doing that, so it's very important that we contextualize the book of Numbers. What's the book of Numbers? Okay. The book of Numbers is a continuation of the Israelites' journey from Mount Sinai, following their escape from Egypt under the leadership of the Lord and Moses. Now, I'm going to read out this whole chapter, so hopefully you'll bear with me, and uh, we'll see if there is, in fact, some pro-abortion going on in here. Okay, so starting at chapter 5, verse 11. Numbers. <laughs> then the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, If a man's wife goes astray and is unfaithful to him, so that another man has sexual relations with her, and this is hidden from her husband, and her impurity is undetected, since there is no witness against her, and she has not been caught in the act. And if feelings of jealousy come over her husband, and he suspects his wife, and she is impure, or if he is jealous and suspects her even though she is not impure, then he is to take his wife to the priest. He must also take an offering of a tenth of an ephah of barley flour on her behalf. He must not pour olive oil on it or put incense on it because it is a grain offering for jealousy, a reminder offering to draw attention to wrongdoing. The priest shall bring her and have her stand before the Lord. Then she shall take some holy water in a clay jar and put some dust from the tabernacle floor into the water. After the priest has had the woman stand before the Lord, he shall loosen her hair and place in her hands the reminder offering, the grain offering for jealousy, while he himself holds the bitter water that brings a curse. Then the priest shall put the woman under oath and say to her, if no other man has had sexual relations with you and you have not gone astray and become impure while married to your husband, may this bitter water that brings a curse not harm you. But if you have gone astray while married to your husband and you have made yourself impure by having sexual relations with a man other than your husband, here the priest is to put the woman under this curse. May the Lord cause you to become a curse among your people. When he makes your womb miscarry and your abdomen swell, may this water that brings a curse into your body so that your abdomen swells or your womb miscarries. Then the woman is to say, I'm in, so be it. The priest is to write these, curse, th these curses on a scroll and then wash them off into the bitter water. He shall make the woman drink the bitter water that brings a curse, and this water that brings a curse and causes bitter suffering will enter her. The priest is to take from her hands the grain offering for jealousy, wave it before the Lord, and bring it to the altar. The priest is then to take a handful of the grain offering as a memorial offering and burn it on the altar. After that, he is to have the woman drink the water. If she has made herself impure and been unfaithful to her husband, this will be the result. When she is made to drink the water that brings a curse and causes bitter suffering, it will enter her, her abdomen will swell, and her womb will miscarry, and she will become a curse. If, however, the woman has not made herself impure, but is clean, she will be cleared of guilt and will be able to have children. This, then, is the law of jealousy when a woman goes astray and makes herself impure while married to her husband, or when feelings of jealousy come over a man because he suspects his wife. The priest is to have her stand before the Lord and is to apply this entire law to her. The husband will be innocent of any wrongdoing, but the woman will bear the consequences of her sin. All right, so having read all of that, I'm going to just say that the Bible, at first glance, does seem to endorse abortion if you don't actually know what an abortion is. Okay, but what is an abortion? An abortion is a termination of pregnancy by removal or expulsion of a fetus, guys. But that isn't what we're actually seeing happen in the book of Numbers. What we're seeing happen in Numbers is the Lord 
calling for a woman who may or may not be guilty of adultery taking a drink of holy water that purges any kind of uncleanliness from her womb. In this case, that would be a child conceived by a man that the woman isn't married to. All right? All right, so there's no medical intervention being carried out where a doctor uses a vacuum to suck out the baby's brains. All right, so in numbers, if a woman is guilty of adultery, what would happen is she'd be cursed by the Lord. And after drinking this water, her pregnancy would continue eventually leading to an induced miscarriage, not an abortion. Okay, and that's using medical terms that we use today. That clearly defines what an abortion is. Alright. Alright, so I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, take my leave. Um, thank you guys for watching. And you have a blessed day.